Hi everyone, I'm Yao Chen. I'm the founder of Canaris. Canaris is a startup making visual exploration of data more simple and accessible for people. A quick introduction of our open source projects. GraphQL is a light and embeddable visual analytic component. It allows you to analyze the data with simple drag and drop operations or chat interface. And for developers, you can easily embed GraphQL as a simple React component in your web system. And for PigWalker, it's a Python wrapper of GraphQL with simple one line of code, it can turn your data frame into an interactive UI for data exploration in Jupyter Notebook. And finally, for Rust, Rust focuses on the automation of data exploration. You can regard it as some automation of all your works in PigWalker and GraphQL. It can automatically discover interesting patterns and insights generates the most proper visualization for them. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on the PigWalker. We will learn how to use PigWalker in Jupyter Notebook to simplify visual exploration then how to use PigWalker with Snowflake for large scale of data. Finally, we are going to cover how to use PigWalker with Streamlit to build an interactive visualization web application. So let's get started. Well, okay, let's talk about how to use PigWalker in Jupyter Notebook. And here I got a CSV data file, and I'm going to turn this data file into a data frame and put it into PigWalker for visual exploration. So let's get started. First, I need pandas to handle our data frame. Uh, import pandas as pd. And our pig walker, import pig walker as pyg. And I'm defining a data frame from our csv file, which is pd.raise.csv from the data slash bags data.csv. So we can have a brief view of this data frame with data frame dot hat. So you can see that there's variables like seasons, temperature, and cache users, register users, and the date time. So I'm going to directly put the data frame into PickWalker with the simple API PickWalker dot walk with data frame. So here is our PickWalker UI, and for this UI. There's a data tab and a visualization tab. For the data type here, you can see that we have the raw data. You can view the details of every row of data. And you can also see the distributions of the columns. You can set some filters on those columns. Uh, for example, I can just select a sub range of temperature. So I'm going to select this sub range. And here we are. So for now, I got a subset of this data set, and you can see that all those distributions of columns just recalculated based on the subsets I just choose. And here you can even see the filters I just configured. And you can remove these filters. Okay, so let's go to the data visualization part. Here you can build data visualizations with very simple drag and drop operations. For example, I can see the relation between temperature and season. And for the aggregation, I'm going to use min. And so building data visualization was super simple. In PigWalker, you can just use drag and drop operations. And I can also check the relationship between temperature and date time. But notice here for the date time, it actually shows us it is the nominal type because of this icon. I need to change the type to the temporal so it can be a real time. So you can see that the icon just changed to a calendar, which uses the uh, real date time. Okay, so I'm going to use the date time to see the relation between date time and temperature. And I can make the visualization larger. Yeah. Okay, but the chart still looks a little bit weird because we got so many data points here. Uh, in each point of the data is actually represented and the data in one hour. So we got two years of data. That's a lot of data points. Maybe I just want to analyze how temperature changing over a day. So I need to extract a feature from date time, which I just needed an hour. Luckily, PigWalker have those transformation. You can directly click the date time and we are using temp feature of hour here. And I'm going to remove date time and put hour here. So you can see there I got a a relation between the hours in a day and the temperature of that time. 
I can also add more variables, like I can, can put the cache users, and I'm going to see the mean. And of course, I can add more, like the register users. So I can compare the distribution of those different variables in PigWork. So we just finished our very first data visualization. Uh, what if I just want to save this visualization? Well, to save the result, there are multiple ways. The first way we introduce is export the data visualization as code. So there's an export code button in the toolbar, in which we can click. I can see the code here. We can just copy to clipboard. And in new style, I can paste the code I just got and rerun the code. So here I just got the very exact same results I just built, but in another style. So if you, if I don't save the results, for, for example, I can directly run this code again, and I will get an empty PigWalker user interface. So to save the result, you need to export the code, which a PigWalker will generate a visual specification and pass this specification to the spec parameter. So instead of using the export code, I can also use a local JSON file to store the result and to reload the result. I already have an example in the spec folder, which is a pre-built exam example in the JSON file. So I'm going to use the local JSON file this time with the same data frame, but for the spec, where is the local JSON file in the spec folder I have already built. It's, I think it's called bikeschar.json. I see the results. So here is some data visualizations I built before, but I just stored the result in the file. Put a empty JSON file here, and after you build the data visualization, you can just click the save button in the toolbar, and people will automatically save all the result in the JSON file uh, you just gave it. So this is much convenient uh, than the code, I think. And I will show another interesting features we, in PigWalker. You can see there is an Ask button where PigWalker can generate data visualizations with simple questions. So like I can ask show the relation of casual users and registered users. And you just tap Ask. And PigWalker will generate the data visualization direct for me. So I don't need to use drag and drop operations. I can just simply ask questions to generate all those charts. And after you've got those charts, you can continue to ask further questions or use drag and drop operations. For example, I can edit this chart with drag and drop. So it's not a static image. It is still an interactive and editable data visualization in PicWalker. Or add more variables. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about how to use PigWalker with larger data. Well, PigWalker by default estimates the volume of your data, and for small data sets, it will run all those computations directly in your browser. But for larger data sets, it can run all those queries in your local devices in Python kernel with a .db engine there. For example, in my devices, PigWalker can handle gigabytes of CSV file, but for larger data sets, I cannot handle all those queries on my devices. I need a data warehouse or database to handle those queries. In this case, PigWalker allow you to put a data warehouse connection to it. So all I need to do is to import a connector from PigWalker's database parser. And for this connector, it only needs two parameters. The first one is a SQL alchemy. A URI, you wish you can put your Snowflake connection information there. And for the second, it is a SQL queries that I, for example, I'm going to just select everything from my demo state set. And to import pig worker and then put the connection to pigworker.org. So for now, PigWalker just rendered a, the UI based on the Snowflake connection. Uh, instead of running all those queries on my laptop, for all those drag and drop operations, 
I made. For now, people will translate my operations into SQL queries and push it to the remote data warehouse. So this is how Pickwalker can handle large volume of data. It does not handle all those computation itself. Instead, it can push all those queries to some remote data warehouse. Well, okay, let's talk about how to use Pickwalker with Streamlit. So with Streamlit, we can turn Pickwalker into a web application so we can share the result or the interactive data visualization with others as a web application. So let's get started. First, I'm going to import Streamlit SSD. And we also need pandas to handle the data frame as PD. So I'm going to build a web application that allows users to upload their own CSV file. And we can turn that CSV file into a Pickwalker UI to analyze those data. So I need a file uploader at the beginning. So we need a Streamly component, which is sd.fileuploader. We can set a label, your CSV data, and we can put the result into a variable like uploaded file, equal to file uploader. So if the uploaded file is not done, then we can turn this file into a data frame with pandas.readsdsv. So data frame equal to pandas.readsdsv uploaded file. Well, for now, we got our data frame. And now we need to render this data frame with Pickwalker. But, so unlike render a Pickwalker UI in Jupyter Notebook, we have a new API in Streamlit. So I can from Pickwalker.api.streamlit import our class called Streamlit Renderer. And what we need to do is we need to initiate a Streamlit Renderer well, I'm going to call it Pickwalker app, which equals Streamlit Renderer. And for the parameters, it's almost the same with the pickwalker.walk. So we just pass our data frame to Streamlit Renderer. And then we can just render the Pickwalker UI with Pickwalker app dot explorer with this uh, components. So that's all. Let's just write this code with Streamlit run app.py. On the left side, we can say that we just render a Streamlit file uploader. So I'm going to select a random dataset. OK, so we just got our Streamlit UI. And this UI, you can drag and drop to make any kind of data visualizations, as in Jupyter Notebook. So on the left side, we can see our Streamlit app. And there is the file uploader components already. I can just choose a local demo dataset, and it will just turn my dataset into an interactive UI. I can make it larger. Yeah, like I can analyze the relation between years and displacements. Yeah, but you can see that the space for this app is very narrow. In order to render a wider pig worker, we need to reset the stream is page layout which we can set the streamlist.sets page config layouts layouts equal wide so in this case i'm getting a much wider pig worker ui i can make any kind of drag and drop to make those data visualizations and of course we can build another app that the user does not need to upload their own CSV file, but we can provide an existing data set and some result we have already built. So I'm going to use a back sharing data set with data frame equal to pandas read CSV in my data folder, bags data .csv. And then I can directly render pickwalker like pickwalker app equal to streamlit renderer. And with my data frame. And of course, our pre built results just pass it through the specification. Same as before, you can pass a local JSON file, like specification bags chart.json. 
and pick up her app explorer. Let's rerun this application. And you can see that here's my previous result. You can share it with others, and others can continue to analyze based on the result you just get. Okay, that's all for today. So we covered how to use PigWalker in Jupyter Notebook, how to save the results of PigWalker, and how to use PigWalker with larger dataset with Snowflake. And finally, we cover how to use PigWalker with Streamlets. For more detail and examples of PigWalker, you can visit our GitHub at github.com slash canary slash PigWalker. We also welcome any contributions to PigWalker. So if you have any suggestions, thoughts, or feedback to PigWalker, just raise an issue on PigWalker or join our discussions. There are also some proposals about new features and APIs of PigWalker. And welcome to join our discussion in GitHub. And thank you all for today.